Good evening, everyone, and welcome again to Springfield Indians Hockey. Tonight, the Indians take on the Nova Scotia Oilers. As usual, our guest on our Coach's Corner show, Indians coach, Lauren Henning. First of all, Coach, your team in a slump here, going 0-6 uh, uh, in the last six games, having a tough time, but uh, it, the playoffs are just around the quarter and some changes with the Indians. How do you assess the team at this point of the season? Well, obviously, you're not happy when you're 0-6 uh, in your last six games. We've, we've played well. We've, we could have won all six, actually. We've just uh, had a few mental breakdowns at the wrong time. We've uh, fell asleep for about five, ten minutes of each game, and, and it was over. We, uh, you know, we were leading 3 nothing, 2 nothing, 4-3 with four minutes to go. I mean, it's 3-1 uh, in Binghamton completely dominating, and they uh, get a goal and we just collapse. So it's, uh, you know, I'm not totally disappointed, but, it, uh, you know, we've got to start working on our mental part of our game, start picking that up, and hopefully it'll all fall together. The Indians on the road, there were three games against Baltimore, Binghamton, and Hershey. How would you assess the team's play during that uh, uh, road trip? The team has been off since that time, but how would you assess the team's play during that uh, streak on the road? Well, as I said, we played sporadic, sporadically, so it's, uh, you know, I'm not happy with it, but at times we played, uh, we stayed with uh, what we were doing in our system and eliminating and uh, keeping them off the puck. and which we were doing early in the game, and then we had just had some breakdowns through laziness or mental breakdowns, and it's cost us the game. And, uh, you know, whether it's the big save at the right time or just uh, collapse with uh, a couple guys going for the same man, it's just a lot of co coverage in our zone. So we've had a week off, and uh, we've had time to work on a few things, and hopefully we can get our head together and get, get our together in our zone a little better. Coach, let's talk about the changes with the Springfield Indians Hockey Club. Boy, the team has changed around as far as the roster is concerned the last couple of weeks. The game wasn't, uh, we had no game uh, uh, televised last week, so there's been pretty much two weeks between our last game on uh, Continental Cable Vision. What has been the big changes as far as the roster is concerned? There have been some changes. Well, uh, Jimmy Archibald came back, who was two weeks ago, he went for three games, and he went up to Minnesota, now he's back, and Donnie Biggs, who we brought in from Oshawa Junior, just finished, and Mike Neal, who we brought in from uh, Junior, just finished with Windsor. Vern Smith is injured, so he won't be playing tonight, but uh, there's been so many changes. I guess that's uh, our Lorne Mollick, and uh, won't be playing tonight. Uh, Bruce Lennon, uh, the GM, is going to be backing up, and Sean Kilroy who we brought in last week for uh, Mike Sands' suspension is going to be a starting goaltender tonight. So I guess there's been a few changes. Now, Mike Sands had a three-game suspension due to a, 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 a situation that occurred in Baltimore, but he'll be ready on Saturday night against Nova Scotia. Yeah, he'll be ready to play tomorrow night. Uh, he's, this will be his third game. He uh, sat out, uh, he got in the Baltimore game, so he sat out to Hershey, uh, Binghamton, and, uh, and tonight's game. So it'll be three games. Is it a little bit uh, surprising for you to know that your backup goaltender is a guy that you deal with in the front office uh, uh, from the beginning of the season all the way to now? Well, it's a little shaky when he's, you think he's down the end of the bench looking over your shoulder. But other than that, uh, no, it's, uh, I, mean, I know Bruce, is, uh, he hasn't played this year, so hopefully he's not going to get a, an opportunity to see what he can do in the Nets. But he's, you know, he's very competitive, and he, you know, obviously he would play if he had a, the opportunity was there where he had to play. But... Hopefully Sean comes up and, uh, you know, a lot of pressure on him, obviously. He hasn't played for a while and coming into a situation like this and hopefully he can come up with a big big game for us. Coach, the magic number is dipped down to four points as far as clinching a playoff spot with New Haven, so I know you have to be very happy about that. Well, I'm not happy with the situation, how, how it, why it's dipping. You know, they were, they were losing and we were losing, so luckily they didn't put anything together. It would have been very close. Uh, you know, we they've got a couple of tough games coming up, but we've got to get some momentum going ourselves and start putting some things together in playoff right around the corner and uh, you know, we got to start feeling good about ourselves and we, ha we have the team we have the talent uh, you know we're going to get a couple more players from the Islanders back Alan Kerr and Dale Henry so that's going to help us a lot and I think we'll be all right as long as we can start uh, putting some things together now. Tonight the Indians take on the Nova Scotia Oilers a team that you haven't seen very much this year only three times but then you get your share of them seeing them three times in three nights. Well, sometimes that's good, sometimes bad. Uh, you know, if a team is dominating the other team, and then it's not not great because uh, you know you play them three times. And but then again, the Novi's playing great, and uh, you know early in the year we played them when we when we were playing great, and we kind of uh, dominated a little. Now they they're playing great, and we're struggling a bit. So hopefully we can uh, get it going tonight. They've got a skating team, they've got a couple of injuries, and they've got a, a great skating team. So we got to be be playing the body, eliminating a lot of give and go. So we have to make sure that. We're concentrating on our men and picking up on our men in our zone. They have a lot of movement, and we can't be following the puck. 
Coach, one final question. Uh, with the playoffs just around the corner, anything that you're going to do with your club from now on uh, to the uh, first game of the playoffs to get the team ready? Well, there's a couple things that uh, looks like we're playing Binghamton if we make it, and you know, there's a couple things that I'd like to try that I'd like to do against Binghamton. We haven't done all year that that I'd like to try in the remaining games. Uh, so hopefully we can wrap it up and we can we can try a few things. And I'd like to rest a couple of guys, especially defensemen who played a lot this year. And down the stretch, we got eight games in ten days. I don't want anybody getting injured. But, you know, that's when you do get injured when you're tired. So if we can wrap it up, uh, you know, I'd like to rest a couple of guys. And, and if you don't, then you know, then obviously you got to go in there with your full unit. Well, Coach, uh, let's hope uh, uh, the Indians can clinch it this weekend when this game is aired on Monday night, and we'll see how the Indians can do. Good luck tonight and uh, for the rest of the season. Well, thanks, Mike. Indians coach Lauren Henning, the Indians and the Nova Scotia Oilers coming right up in just a moment. Extra skate just for the health of it at the Springfield Olympia Ice and Roller Sports Center, your year-round sports facility. You can enjoy ice and roller skating as well as indoor soccer and floor hockey. The Springfield Olympia Ice and Roller Center has a full skate and pro shop, so you'll find what you're looking for. From amateurs to experts and anyone in between, a complete snack bar will satisfy that athletic appetite. For birthday parties, club get-togethers, or special occasions, renting a rink is the fun way to throw a party. And it's as easy as the Springfield Olympia Sports Center, conveniently located at exit 13 off I-91. Continental Cablevision presents the Springfield Indians against the Nova Scotia Oilers. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Springfield Indians Hockey. Only two more games on Continental Cablevision as far as the regular season is concerned, and we have a good one on tap for you tonight. It's the Indians who are trying to break out of a six-game losing streak against the team that's battling in the American Hockey League's Northern Division for a playoff spot, the Nova Scotia Oilers. John, so many things to talk about about the Springfield Indians Hockey Club, the team on the losing streak and trying to get out of it, getting close to uh, clinching a playoff spot, but probably the biggest story of the night is the fact that the Indians' backup goaltender this evening is the Indians' general manager, Bruce Landon. Now, how did all of this develop that Landon is the backup goaltender tonight? Well, that sort of steals the show here tonight, Mike. Lauren Mullican, one of the Indians' goaltenders, not uniform tonight, out with the flu. Really came up with a bad case of a flu this afternoon and is out of the action, not able to dress tonight. Of course, Mike Sands, the other Indians goaltender, still has one game remaining on his suspension. A three-gamer put on him by the American Hockey League. So Sean Kilroy is in goal for Springfield, and the Indians needed a backup in a hurry. And when they needed it, they went to the general manager and picked up Bruce Landon. Sean Kilroy is the starter tonight, and of course, as you mentioned, Bruce Landon, the backup. Kilroy, a youngster, as the Indians are making their appearance on the ice. Kilroy had played in the International Hockey League, was out of the action and back at home, and he'll be the starter tonight for the Indians. John, we have a look at Bruce Landon, the Indians goaltender, on our pregame feature. Well, but for, before we get to Bruce Landon, let's keep the fans in suspense a little bit and take a look at one tough customer for the Nova Scotia Oilers. He's Archie Henderson. Archie Henderson leads the American Hockey League in penalty minutes. He has four seasons plus with over 300 minutes in penalties in this American Hockey League. His stats aren't that impressive, but at 6'6", 220 pounds, one of the toughest guys in the American Hockey League at whatever level this man has played and always in triple figures as far as penalties are concerned, Archie Henderson, Big Arch as they call him, could stir things up here tonight. He's got over 3,000 minutes in penalties in his career in the American Hockey League. That's not base hits, that's 3,000 penalty minutes and he's in the lineup tonight. Now we'll get to Bruce Landon, the Indians' backup goaltender this evening. Uh, a guy that hasn't played with the Indians since the 77-78 season, and he's the backup tonight. Well, you can call him Batesy, you can call him Boo. Tonight you call him the backup goaltender, and there he is right there wearing number 30, Bruce Landon. It's been quite a while since he's put on the pads, but tonight he serves as the capable backup to Sean Kilroy. Fans remember him, he played here in Springfield with the Old Kings, he played with the Indians, and also, of course, had a great career with the New England Whalers of the World Hockey Association. Bruce Landon in the backup capacity tonight for Springfield. The 
course, as we mentioned, we'll have to keep an eye on Sean Kilroy. He'll be the starting goaltender tonight for the Springfield Indians in his first American Hockey League start. Both teams have made their appearance on the ice, and a lot of festivities this evening, John. It's Girl Scout night here and all kinds of activities here at the center. Well, all sorts of activities going on, Mike. As you mentioned, there's a National Pee Wee Tournament in town. A lot of the youngsters involved in that are here tonight. As you see, Indians captain Tim Trimper accepting a cake presented to him by the Girl Scout Council as it is Girl Scout night. But, Mike, these two teams, Nova Scotia and Springfield, both fighting to make the playoffs. Springfield just a touch away from clinching a playoff spot. Nova Scotia, on the other hand, involved in a dogfight in their division. It should be a dandy of a hockey game here tonight. The Indians, as we mentioned, only four points away as far as the magic number is concerned. Any combination of Indian wins or ties or New Haven ties or losses, totaling four, and the Indians make the playoffs. Now let's pause for the playing of our national anthem here at the Springfield Civic Center. by Francis Smith and John we had failed at the outset to mention the fact that the uh, moment of silence for Eddie Shore 82 years of age Mr. Hockey uh, passed away uh, when the Indians were on their road trip that's correct Mike and we had that moment of silence for Eddie Shore just prior to the start of tonight's game here at the Springfield Civic Center and of course we mentioned on the radio the fact that the legend will live on as far as Eddie Shore is concerned Springfield's Mr. Hockey and quite a tribute well, the starting goaltender this evening for the Springfield Indians, and there you see him, Sean Kilroy. No record this year, his first American Hockey League start. 
On defense, Glenn Hicks and Chris Pryor. The forward line, Scott House and Tim Tremper and Jim Archibald. From the Nova Scotia Oilers, starting in the Nets, a goaltender fans in Springfield will be familiar with. The goaltender by the name of Marco Barron, an ex-Indian who played with the Indians in 80-81. This year, 5-4-1 in 12 games at 2.60 goals against average. On defense, Rajon Clucci and Larry Melnick. The forward line, Speedy Kenberry, along with the center iceman Ray Cote, the leading scorer on the team, and also a rookie on right wing by the name of Paul Houck out of the University of Wisconsin. The referee this evening, Andre Duhamel. The Indians have a mark of five wins and five losses in games that Duhamel has worked with the Indians this year. Frank Quigley and Joe Calcasola, the linesmen. The Indians come in with a mark of 33 wins, 35 losses, and four ties for 70 points, a position of fourth place in the American Hockey League Southern Division. The Oilers, 33 wins, 33 losses, and seven ties, 73 points, and they're in a battle right now tied for third in the tight American Hockey League Northern Division. So it's the Indians against the Oilers. The Oilers trying to win here on the road against the Springfield Indians Hockey Club, who will have to play some good defensive hockey tonight with the goaltender making his first professional, uh, actually first American Hockey League start. From the faceoff, Rajon Cloutier clears to the Indians line, and the Indians' Chris Pryor head mans for Scott Housen. Housen wheels to center and squirms through, but blocked at the defense as he backhands one through. And here come the Oilers back. Very a long shot, but it's whistled down offside at the Springfield Indians' blue line. Well, this is the fourth meeting of the year between these two clubs. Nova Scotia holds the season series edge two games to one in favor of Nova Scotia. And, of course, as this game is broadcast, the Indians will have completed the season series with the Nova Scotia Oilers playing three games with this club this past weekend. Well, the faceoff, as you can see, will be outside the blue line. The Oilers, a very physical hockey club, they have seven players with over 100 minutes in penalties this year. So the uh, Oilers are a very aggressive club, and the Indians will have to watch out. From the faceoff, here come Nova Scotia into the Springfield zone. Quick burst by the defenseman Dave Allison, who jams one into the corner, and the Indians take over. Here come the try, up to center ice prior. Cross ice uh, into the neutral zone, then Solheim clears it in. Here is Hamway races after, but the Oilers' decision back behind his own net for Allison. Here are the Oilers in their own zone. Dean Hopkins is tied up. Now it's dropped back to Leiter. Shoots, and he shot it high. Oilers trying to get it out of there, and they do on the left wing side. And here to center is Dean Decision into the Springfield zone. Backhand pass on the left side, and the shot wide by another ex-Indian, Pat Conacher. Now it's dropped back to the point, cleared back into the far corner area, and then the Indian Solheim is right there. Here is Solheim in this scoreless first period. We played... Over a minute is the Oilers showing that aggressive play. Here's a quick chance and uh, stopped by Mollican, or stopped by Kilroy rather, at the play right in front, and we'll have a faceoff. And I'm so used to seeing Mollican and Sands in the net, so unusual to see this youngster, but no name on his back, Sean Kilroy. Well, Sean Kilroy comes up with a save there on Steve Graves. Let's see it again as Graves moves in in an effort to pick up the loose puck here. Some great forechecking by Nova Scotia early. Dean Hopkins forced the Indians defenseman Leiter to cough up the puck. Then Graves picked up the loose puck, moved in on Kilroy, and Kilroy smothered it. 18.46 remaining, just underway here. With the Indians against the Nova Scotia Oilers, we have no score. From the faceoff, it's cleared back, and the loose puck is taken and then shot into the Springfield zone. Here's a quick burst and the stop by Kilroy on Graves who moved in. And the loose puck taken by Springfield and a lead pass but knocked down by Graves. He feeds cross ice on the left side but here come the Indians. There's Markle across the line. Drops it through for Terry Tate who wheels into the corner. Feeds it for Handy. Centers for Markle. And a stop by Barron and the rebound comes free and here come the Oilers. Up the center ice comes Graves. Scoops into the Springfield zone, and Kilroy leaves it for zone defense where Johannesson takes over. Here's big Johannesson, loses. Oilers try and center one. Henderson for Graves, and Graves couldn't control it. Big jam up on the near boards. Loose puck taken. Oilers clear back behind the net. Now it's center for Graves. Shoots. Kilroy comes across and makes a save. Big save now at the uh, early part, and now Loveday deflects one up high over the glass into the crowd, and Sean Kilroy, the youngster, came up with Boy, he really is, and talk about getting some action early. Sean Kilroy right in the middle, the thick of it right here, originally drafted by the Vancouver Canucks, and he comes up with a couple of saves here. 
As we see it again, this is Graves who had the first scoring chance on Kilroy as Kilroy does the splits there and stops the center iceman for the Nova Scotia Oilers, Steve Graves. Once again, Sean Kilroy coming up with a couple of big saves here early. And we'll tell you a little bit of background about Kilroy in just a moment. The Indians on left wing. Here's Trotche races after it. Backhander right on, bearing the save, and he ends up taking over, but the whole play whistled down anyway on a two-line offside. Sean Kilroy, 5'11", 173, from Ottawa, uh, Ontario. 12 games with Flint of the International Hockey League this year, going 5-5, five and 4.62. Five, he was on loan from Kalamazoo of the IHL, and of course, as John mentioned, property of the Vancouver Canucks. Also played one game in Peoria of the IHL and backed up in a game this year with Fredericton when the Express came to town and played the Indians and was a backup goaltender one night here in Springfield when he was a member of the Fredericton Express. Now on the left side, Trotche backhands one through. The loose puck taken by the Oilers and it's backhanded behind the net. Here in their own zone is Rajon Kluche, played for a couple of years with Adirondack. Now Trotche centers one. Back to the point, it's uh, unable to be held in by the Indians, and Pryor feeds on the left side for Johannesson, who dumps one into the Oilers' zone. We've played three minutes into this first period, no score between Springfield and Nova Scotia. Now a lead pass on right wing. Here comes Ramo Sumanen across the line, but the whole play whistled down offside, and we'll have another faceoff. Well, Indians defenseman Vern Smith not in the lineup tonight, out with a groin injury, and that's a day-to-day -day basis with Smith. We'll be talking with the rookie defenseman between periods one and two. Also for the Indians, Alan Kerr and Dale Henry still remain on emergency recall with the New York Islanders. For Nova Scotia, Norm Oban is out with a rib injury. Bart Yakamet has some knee ligament damage, and that's the extent of the Nova Scotia injuries. From the faceoff, here is Ken Berry racing into the Springfield zone. Gives on the far side, delayed penalty coming up against Springfield. As the Oilers take over, Steve Smith from Glasgow, Scotland, clears to center and Housen knocks it back down. But we're going to have a penalty back of the play against the try. A hooking is the call, and the Indians receive the first penalty of this hockey game with 16.33 remaining in the first period. Andre Duhamel, the referee, calling that penalty off the puck, and the Indians rookie Mike Neal, property of the New York Islanders, playing in his first game with the Springfield Indians, takes a seat in the penalty box. Neal from Kenora, Ontario, 19 years of age, had three goals, 17 assists for 20 points in 62 games with Windsor. This year in junior hockey, also compiled 143 minutes in penalties, and he finds himself in the penalty box, a third-round draft pick by the New York Islanders, and now Nova Scotia goes on the power play. Not too good on the power play, as you see. 18.1%. They've also been not that effective against the Indians this year, going one for six, 16.7% with the man advantage against the Tribe in the three games. It's going to be interesting, Mike, to see how this ice surface holds up here tonight. This ice surface has been through an awful lot the past week at the Civic Center with three rock concerts and also a Pee -wee, National Pee Wee Tournament going on with hockey being played here all day long. The ice a little sluggish due to the heat outside. We'll have to see how it holds up. Here's Trimper for the Indians on the far boards. Backhanding one into the Oiler corner and the Nova Scotia team back to take over. It's scoreless in this first period, but Nova Scotia have the power play. Here's Conacher up to center ice and a chance for the Oilers. On the near boards for Ray Cote has 13 power play goals. Leads the team with the man advantage in scoring. Now it's jammed up and dropped to the right point. Chance for Nova Scotia's Melnick feeds to the left side. Quick chance and the stop by Kilroy on the shot by Kluche, and he holds on. Well, minute 19 remaining, plenty of time for the Oilers on the power play. They get one chance here, though, early on a top of the circle face-off, a rather slap shot blast here off the top of the face-off circle. Rajon Cloutier, who started the year with the Adirondack Red Wings and then was traded to Nova Scotia. There you see him with a blast, and Kilroy, that shot might have been heading wide, but still, Kilroy came out well and had to come up with that save anyway. Still plenty of time left, though, on the pe penalty to Neal. And we'll have a face-off in the Springfield zone. A minute 19 left in the penalty, as John mentioned. The Oilers have the power play, and they have Mark Habshot to center out on this power play. They have, at the points, Lowell Loveday, who takes over at that left point. Here is Loveday for Nova Scotia. Winds it through on the near side for Habshot, but checked away, and Springfield able to scoop one to center. Back in his own zone, and taking over is the rookie defenseman, Steve Smith. Dropping it through for Lowell Loveday. This is the first time that we've seen Nova Scotia on Continental Cablevision this year. And the Oilers, who need a victory tonight, beat for a half shot. 
Here's Hapshai, drops it back to the point. Loveday shoots, and Kilroy, a glove save, and the drive from the point by the defenseman, Loveday. Well, long range shot here taken by defenseman Lowell Loveday, who can shoot the puck, but great job by the Indians' defense. Glenn Hicks and Dave Jensen both cleared the way so that Sean Kilroy, as you see him right there on your screen, had an excellent view of that puck and came up with the save. You know, Mike, Mike Neal's another player from junior picked up by the Indians as a newcomer. Dan Biggs, another one coming from the, uh, from the Minnesota North Star organization. He also seeing his first action tonight. Faceoff will be in the Springfield zone. Part of the reason, of course, is the fact that Alan Kerr and Dale Henry still remain on emergency recall to the New York Islanders. Here's a quick shot right on goal. Kilroy is able to pounce on top of it and make the save. Kilroy, by the way, played for Peterborough of the Ontario Hockey League last year. Right behind Peter Sidorkovich, as far as the goals against the averages are concerned, he was eighth, Sidorkovich seventh in the OHL a year ago. And it's also interesting that Bruce Landon also played his junior hockey in Peterborough, so that's quite a coincidence here. Small world that they're, they're both thrown together in some odd circumstances and after coming from the same originating point in junior. From the faceoff, Oilers try and hold on, and here come the Indians on the left side. It's clear to center, and the Oilers have to go back as the Indians said. Shot one through. Here's Kluche up the middle with 30 seconds to go in the penalty. Up the half shot. Half shot dropping it through to the near side. Oilers drop for Kluche to the right side. And the shot is stopped by Kilroy. And the Indians take over and clear one to center and deep into the Oilers zone. Here are the Oilers back to take over and Kluche in his own zone with nine seconds left in the penalty. Up to center ice and here comes half shot across the line. But Jensen is there to poke it off his stick and clear it to center. The player Neal is back on. The Indians have killed it off. And here come the Oilers once again. Hapshide speeds in. Hapshide shoots right on. And a big rebound, but stopped by Kilroy. And the Indians' Hamway slides to center. Here are the Oilers in this scoreless game. We've played five minutes and 40 seconds into the first period. Now the Oilers racing in after it. Here is Dwayne Betker, the loose puck behind the net. Here are the Oilers quickly centering one for Henderson. But he's tied up on the play and will have a face-off in the Springfield zone. I mentioned Danny Biggs earlier. He hasn't taken a shift here tonight, but here's some background on him. A ninth-round draft pick out of the Minnesota North Star organization. Played this year with Oshawa in the Ontario League in junior. 5'8", 180. But this year, some impressive stats in 60 games. 48 goals, 69 assists for 117 points. And he led the club in point in that category. And, of course, the club bowing out to Belleville this week in junior hockey playoff action. Now he finds himself in Springfield. And, of course, Neal's team uh, lost to London uh, in the Ontario Hockey League playoffs uh, when he was with Windsor. Face-off on the far corner, and we'll have a face-off in the Springfield zone. Oh, play slowing up a little now bit. Now Henderson has a hold of a Springfield player, and they fight on the far side. Henderson trying to wrestle the Indians player down and is able to succeed on the far side. And it looks like it's Johannesson, two big guys able to wrestle with each other on the far side and Henderson tried to pick him up and pull him down and that's what he did. Well, there's a lot of weight, a couple of tons there between Glenn Johannesson and Archie Henderson. Henderson, of course, at 6'6", 220. Johannesson at 6'3", 230 himself. So an awful lot of tonnage along the far boards there. And as you mentioned, Mike, just a wrestling match could be an indication of things to come. We'll just have to wait and see. And this Nova Scotia club looks like they've come out here with some fire in their eyes. And this could be an indication of what we might see later in this hockey game. Well, as we mentioned earlier, seven players with over 100 penalty minutes on their hockey club, a very physical team. Of course, they were the team that was involved in that big bench-clearing brawl up in Binghamton. They've also had some fierce encounters with the Moncton Golden Flames, a couple of big bashes between those two clubs. They're a team that's very physical, like to play it rough. Well, she also mentioned that Henderson got involved with the New Haven Nighthawks a week ago during a practice session at the New Haven Coliseum in which Henderson had a few words with Al Tour of the Nighthawks, and they got involved there, and it carried over from game to game, so Nova Scotia can mix it up. Here are the Oilers trying to dump one in front, but Springfield back-checking, able to clear to center. Here is Housen for the Tribe. Housen trying to move into the Oilers' end of the rink, but he's tied up there by the Oilers' love day, and the Nova Scotia's decision clears to center, but the Indians take over, and here is Pryor in his own zone. Hands it right to the Oilers' captain, on the near side, Conacher drops it back for his own defense. Here is Mike Height, former Nighthawk, up the center right for Conacher. 
across the line, but the whole play whistled down offside at the Springfield line. Well, it's just about that time, trivia time I'm talking about, with 13 minutes and 21 seconds remaining in the first period. Been an exciting game so far, a lot of the play in the Springfield zone and some great goaltending by Sean Kilroy. But of course, we're waiting that trivia question, and I tell you, and look at that. Right away, they had it ready to go, and I tell you, this Continental crew every week, it amazes me. Who holds the Indians' record for the most penalty minutes in one season? Who holds the Indians' record for most penalty minutes in one season? And with this game, you've talked about the seven players and triple figures, Archie Henderson. That's a pertinent question. Who holds the most penalty minute record in a single season for the Springfield Indians? Here are the Indians. Jensen scooping one into the Oilers' end of the rink where Rajon Cloutier back to take over. He gets for Ken Berry up to center ice, and here come the Oilers. Ray Cote, he was very impressive a couple of years back, and the Edmonton Oilers' success in the playoffs. Back after for the Indians is Ken Leiter. He clears on the left side, but the Oilers hold in and jam one back behind the net, and in deep, the Indians' Jensen trying to clear out. Archibald on the near side is checked on the play, and then Jensen for the Tribe able to clear one in the neutral zone. Here is Ron Handy. Feeds cross eyes for Leiter, but hands it right to the Oilers player on the far board, Paul Houck, who dumps into the corner. It's scoreless here in this first period as the Indians' kill right pounces on top of it. Well, Ray Cote and Ron Handy with a little chippiness in front of the Springfield net. Some stick swinging there. You know, a couple of minutes ago, we got a good look at the Nova Scotia coach, Larry Kish. And he, of course, a former coach of the Springfield Indians back in 79-80 when the club was affiliated with the Hartford Whalers. And he coached also in the American Hockey League with Binghamton way back with the Broomdusters in 77-78 and also with the Whalers 80-81, 81-82. And Mikey created an awful lot of havoc in the American Hockey League this year with the European rule. And we'll touch on that later. Here in the Indian zone, Tribe can't get it out. Oilers hold it in. Quick shot by the defenseman Dave Allison is blocked and here come the Indians. Bodak on the near side for Trache but it's cleared to center and prior for the Tribe. Ahead for Trache but blocked off there and Allison goes back after it. We played eight minutes into this first period. No score as the Oilers steal into the Springfield zone. Quick backhander by Steve Graves goes wide of the net. Indians can't get it out. Oilers Hold it in. They wind back behind the net. It's loose into the far corner. Now it's centered. Oilers take over on the far side. Dean Hopkins as they try and center one. Big jam up on the near boards. And then Trotche covers up for the try. Here's Trotche for the Indians on left wing for Bodak. He couldn't get it out. Oilers hold it in. Here it's dropped to the left point. Graves centers one through but blocked off the defense. And Trotche can't get it out. Oilers hold it in. Here on the near side is... Nova Scotia's Mark Hampshire drops it back for Steve Smith, whose shot is blocked. Now the Indians player on the defense, uh, Neal, knocks down an Oiler player. It's fed on the near side, but Nova Scotia holds it in. Here's Hampshire right in front, but blocked. Now Graves a shot wide. Big rebound. Indians having trouble with it, and here they come. Up to center ice comes Springfield. Here's Don Biggs, a lead pass in, and the Oilers back after it, and Allison in his own zone. In this scoreless game, feeds on the left side for Betker who dumps it in. Most of the play, as you can see, in the Springfield zone. Here's Cote winding up, shoots wide. And Lawton for the Tribe, covers up for Springfield and is able to take control. Here is Lawton, near side pass for Jensen who crosses center and is able to clear one in. And the Oilers have to go back. Here are the Indians, forechecking Archibald in deep. Feeds it for Tremper back for Archibald that hops over his stick. And Cote winds it on the near side and out come the Oilers. Now it's jammed up on the far side. Here's Tremper for Springfield, trying to jam it free. Goes behind the net, and the loose play taken by Height, who's able to clear one up the middle, and here comes Suminen into the Springfield zone. This guy can skate the finish sensation. Dropping it through in front of the net, but broken up by Archibald, who breaks in one-on-one. -on -one. Into the Nova Scotia zone, shoots, and he missed the net. Big jam up on the far side, and the Oilers take over, back behind their own net, and here they come. They clear one on the near boards, but Springfield's prior holds it in for Hamway. But Height is there for Nova Scotia. Winds it through on the far side, but Trimper controls. He tries to feed one in front of the net, but the loose puck taken by Nova Scotia's Love Day fights in front with Hamway. Now Trimper a shot, blocked off the defense, and then it's cleared to center. That was really the first good scoring chance the Indians have had so far in this game. We're halfway through the first period, 9.30 remaining. And the Indians, most of the play has been in the Springfield end with Nova Scotia getting the bulk of the scoring chances. Here are the Oilers' Dean Decision moving in. 
Trying to feed one through, bumped off by Solheim. Here's Decision, dropping it through and cutting in on the far boards is Larry Melnick. Here's Melnick who played with the Boston Bruins. Now it's centered, but it ends up going outside the line and the Oilers have to go back. Here is Melnick feeding rink wide into the Springfield zone, but Pryor back after it, loses control. Kilroy, the stop on the player, cutting in on the far side, Decision, and then the whistle is blown and it looks like we're gonna have a face off in the Springfield zone. Decision came, uh, came in with a burst of speed from nowhere. He really did. He really turned down the Jets there, coming down the off wing. First pass, Chris Pryor, and then Sean Kilroy did an excellent job coming up with a save. Here you see Chris Pryor having trouble with it. Decision didn't have a lot of time to get the wood on the puck, but he did to get an excellent shot away on Kilroy. Kilroy made the save and then somehow maintained his balance just for that split second long enough to lodge the puck in there. Andre Duhamel lost sight of it and whistled the play down. Decision played on that University of North Dakota team which won an NCAA championship. Last year played with the Moncton Alpines of the American Hockey League. 6 one 195 out of Devon, Alberta. Play away and the loose puck taken and here comes Springfield's Terry Tate in his own zone. Shovels it through and it's back behind the net in the Springfield zone lighter. Unable to Get it out of there. Big jam up behind the net. Oilers try and get one for Tony Curry. He's seeing his first action of the night. Now it's wound for Curry into the far corner. He dumps it free. Back after it on the far boards. It's half shied. Trying to feed through, but it's blocked back behind the net as the Oilers continue to pressure Springfield. But then Jensen can't get it out of there. Half shied holds, uh, holds it in, and then Springfield's Jensen able to clear one all the way into the Nova Scotia zone. And the Oilers have to go back after it. Steve Smith. Now in the neutral zone, here is Ron Handy. Feeds one through, but hands it right to Curry. And Curry, a veteran of both the American Hockey League and the NHL, dumps it in. And the Indians have to go back after it. Now it's cleared into the Oilers' zone. And Lowell Loveday back to take over. We have 7 minutes, 47 seconds. Left first period, no score. As a break on left wing for Nova Scotia. Ken Berry into the near corner. Stops to make a play. Holds on to that puck. Backhands one in front. And it's just deflected wide as the Oilers had a good scoring chance. As that was Cote who backhanded it wide on the deflection. Now Cote centers one, but Pryor can't get it out. Another quick backhander goes wide. And Kilroy on uh, that one slid across, but it ended up going wide. Now Height at the point. His shot is blocked. Height can't hold it in, and it's jammed up on the near boards where Archibald covers up for Springfield. Shovels on the near boards for Trimper. Trimper, guards the ball, closing in in front for Trimper, who's knocked down. And the Oilers are able to clear it all the way down. The Indians prior going back after it, and icing is going to be called against Nova Scotia. Well, we have 6.59 remaining here in the first period. Still no score. The Nova Scotia Oilers, with some glittering scoring chances, have yet to score here on Sean Kilroy. You mentioned, Mike, a little while ago, Tony Curry, the veteran, played with Vancouver, played with St. Louis, and, of course, now a member of the Edmonton organization. But interesting part about Curry is that he was traded to Vancouver from St. Louis with Jim Nell, Rick Hines, and a fourth-round draft pick. And that fourth-round draft pick turned out to be Sean Kilroy. So that's interesting the way... Some, the way things turn out, and we talked about Bruce Landon ending up as the backup goaltender, but also Sean Kilroy originally could have been part of that St. Louis organization if not traded in that deal. And that, of course, was for Glenn Hanlon. He was sent to the Blues. Face-off in the far corner, and we'll have a face-off there. Curry had uh, some good years in St. Louis, a very good goal scorer, but the knock on him throughout his career is the fact that his size has been the biggest drawing uh, drawback as far as his career is concerned. He's always been able to put the puck in the net. They always fear that he's not big enough and not uh, fast enough to have made it in the National Hockey League despite the fact that he can fire that puck when he's in close. Now on the far side, Solheim dropping it back to the point. Johannesson's shot, a uh, rather lighter shot at the point is blocked and here come Nova Scotia. Uh, quick pass for Conacher blocked down and Nova Scotia drop it back for their own defense. We have six and a half minutes left first period. Lead backhand pass off the boards by Melnick, and it's cleared in offside at the Springfield line. And, of course, Curry started the year with Hartford, and then in the waiver draft was sent over to the Edmonton organization, began the year there, and 
Thought he might stick with Edmonton, but then finds himself back here in Nova Scotia. There's your score on Continental Cable. No score as of yet. The Nova Scotia Oilers putting pressure on Springfield. That man in the goal, number one. It's a new name. Sean Kilroy has been the man between the pipes for Springfield and has done an outstanding job in period number one. Nova Scotia skating quite well and bottling the Indians up at this point. There's an excellent look at the youngster, Kilroy. Face off in the Springfield zone. Ramo Suminen will take the draw. Tate. Now they rule those two players were a bit over anxious. Now Suminen will take the drop for the Oilers and Ron Handy will be the other player to take the draw. From the face off, the loose puck taken by Fryer in his own zone. We have 622 left first period. No score as it's cleared to center and the Oilers are able to bank one off the boards into the Springfield zone. Now Pryor feeds rink wide on the far boards for Handy. His shot bounces wide. Big rebound, and Steve Smith takes over for Nova Scotia. He's able to clear one all the way into the Springfield zone. Indians prior hustling back after it, and as he touches it, the Indians have to go back. They rule no icing on the play. Springfield could have played the puck. Now a lead pass at center. Break for the Indians. Markle in the clear. All alone. Shoots. Oh, and he missed it as he was uh, partially off the side of the net. The goaltender, Barron, may have gotten a slight piece of it, but I don't think so. Now Handy, his shot goes wide as Markle had a chance. The goaltender, Barron, has lost his stick. It's right there on the far side, and the Oilers take over Suminen, as he'll probably just kind of feed on the left side for Betker, and now they're clear to center. The Oilers want to get a stick for Barron, as he now he gets the stick, and the Oilers back, uh, the Indians back after it. And then it's cleared all the way down into the Oilers' zone, and Height goes back after it. Excellent scoring chance for John Markle with some great speed. Steve Smith coughed up the puck at his own blue line, Markle doesn't need an awful lot to get going with the speed he has, but unfortunately just hit the side of the net. Now the Oilers in their own zone are able to clear one out to center, and Leiter has to go back. We have under five minutes to go in the scoreless first period here in Springfield as Leiter is tied up. Shovels ahead, and on the near boards, here comes Springfield. Up to center ice is Lawton. Across the line, trying to feed through, but Height back-checking is able to clear, but held in by Leiter. His shot is blocked the defense, and Nova Scotia Graves at center is tied up. Now Springfield trying to dump one through, and the Oilers back in their own zone. Now lighter for the Indians, unable to get it out of there. Oilers in the forecheck. They jam it up over there. Big jam up behind the net. Here's Nova Scotia's Graves right in front. Shoots. Kilroy the stop. Rebound, and it's loose in front. Quick backhander. They score! I believe Hapshide on the rebound after Kilroy made the original save. The defense were unable to get the puck out of there, and despite a good save on the original shot, it's 1-0 Nova Scotia. Well, this is what excellent forechecking will get for you. Numerous scoring chances, and when you get those extra rebounds, sometimes no matter what you can do, they're going to find the net, and this is what happens right here. Sean Kilroy makes an excellent save. As a matter of fact, he makes two of them, and then you see Hapshide come in here, pick up the loose puck, Right there, Kilroy down and out, could not do anything about it, although he did get a piece of it as it went over his outstretched arm and finally found the net. Mark Hapshide gets the goal, his 25th, to give Nova Scotia the 1 nothing lead. Now on the far board, Springfield able to clear to center and the Oilers back after it. Here are the Nova Scotia club clearing at the Springfield line and Pryor feeds rink wide for Johannesson. Up the middle for Hamway. He's able to move into the Oilers zone. Hamway. Centers one, but blocked off. Now Hamway closing in to the left point. Johannesson shoots and blocked the defense. Solheim for the Indians, skated off by the Withers, Larry Melnick, and then Nova Scotia. Clear on left wing, but here's Hamway. Feeding it through Solheim, a blast, and that's blocked. Here's Pryor turn, spins his shot, blocked the defense, and then decision leads the other way for Nova Scotia. He feeds it on the far boards for Conacher. Conacher races after Hamway also after the loose puck. Springfield can't get it out. Held in by Nova Scotia's Allison, whose shot is blocked, and then it's clear to center where Steve Smith feeds rink wide for the Oilers. On the far boards, here come Nova Scotia. They dump one into the Springfield end of the rink, and the Tribe go back after it. Here are the Indians. Biggs at center. Feeds for Trotche. Trotche dumping it through into the corner, and the Oilers back after it in their own zone. We have 2.50 left first period. It's 1-0 Nova Scotia on the Mark Hampshire goal. Now the Oilers 
Clear one into the center ice area for Barry, who's breaking. But the loose puck just goes on goal, and the Indians have to go back after it. Now Bodak for Springfield. Into the Nova Scotia zone. Chops at it. Feeds for Trache into the far corner. He tries to get around Steve Smith, and Bodak picks up the loose puck. Bodak spins with that puck. Winds into the far corner. Jams up with Cote. They still fight for it, and the Indians take over. Here is a quick centering pass, but it's deflected wide. Now it's loose, and Bodak backhands one wide. Trache also after it, but he ends up falling on top of it, which is 2.05 left. That's scoring play for Nova Scotia. Hapshot his 25th from Curry and Graves at 15.48. There you see him. You talk about moonlighting. There it is. The general manager of the Springfield Indians, the backup goaltender, Bruce Landon, wearing the tools of the trade once again. In an interesting sort, Mike. We see him every day in the office, and sometimes he's the guy who gives us orders, and tonight we're seeing him right here on Continental Cable as a active player. Well, he was a backup goaltender a couple of years back, John. He was the backup in two games, including a bench-clearing brawl against Hershey a couple of years back. So this is not a position that he's uh, a position that he's never been in. He's done that a couple of years ago. So at least he's ready and waiting in case this kind of a situation develops. Here are the Oilers coming to center ice and a chance for Nova Scotia. Quick chance for Steve Graves, but out of the net, Kilroy to clear it away. Now Nova Scotia trying to center one. Quick chance wide as Hampshire was right in front, and then the Indians are able to clear one out the center. Now it's jammed up in the far boards, and Nova Scotia drop it back for their own defense. Here's a quick shot to center where Pryor, the loose puck, is for Tate. Tate just dumps one through with just over a minute to go in this first period. It's 1-0 Nova Scotia, and the Oilers trying to get it out of there. Indians steal it away. Here's Jensen closing in. Shoots, and it may have grazed the post, and it ends up going wide. Here's Jensen for the Indians. Back behind the net for Markle. Markle cuts in front. Centered for Tate, but he couldn't get a shot off. Oilers can't get it out of there. Leiter holds it in the left point. Centers in front for Markle. Shoots. Barron the save. The save of the game so far is Barron. Robs Markle. Now Jensen winds back behind the net. Markle taken out of the play. Hapshad covers up, but Markle steals. With just 48 seconds to go in the period, Loveday is able to clear one outside the line, and the Indians have to go back. The Oiler player on the near side skating to the bench uh, uh, on the near board. Curry had lost his stick on that last play. Now Nova Scotia clear on the right side, and Pat Conacher leads into the Springfield zone. Decision after it, but Kilroy clears it away. Now Decision centers in front. Conacher couldn't get a poke at it with just 20 seconds left in the period. Indians can't get it out. Decision on the far board. Centers in front, but broken up by Springfield with 16 seconds to go in the period. Here's Lawton, beats for Archibald. Holds on to that puck. Centers for Lawton, but it goes off his skate with just eight seconds to go. Conacher for Nova Scotia, slaps it in. On goal, Kilroy makes it stop. Three seconds left, and the buzzer sounds signaling the end of the first period, and the first period in which Nova Scotia pretty much had the better of the play, but after one, it's only one nothing. Well, the Springfield Indians put on a little bit of a flurry there at the end of the first period and got some good scoring chances on Marco Barron, but that was not the case throughout the first period. Nova Scotia comes out of the gate flying, takes the body quite well, does a lot of great forechecking, and only picks up one goal. Sean Kilroy in goal for Springfield with some great play. Mark Habshad with the only goal. That's where we stand right now. Nova Scotia 1, Springfield nothing. Shots on goal in the first period, 14 to 6 in favor of the Oilers. We'll be back with our between periods activities in just a moment. This week in hockey on Friday, April 5th. The Springfield Indians face off against Northern Division leaders, the Maine Mariners. And Saturday, April 6th, the Indians go against interdivision rivals, the New Haven Nighthawks, in their drive for the playoffs. So bring the entire family and join in on the action. Plenty of on-street parking available. That's Friday and Saturday at the Springfield Civic Center. Welcome back, everyone. Mike Burke with John Forslund. And after one period of play, the Springfield Indians trail the Nova Scotia Oilers 1-0. And despite being outshot 14-6, not too bad on the scoreboard at this point, only 1-0. And 
the Indians really uh, have to be thankful that it's one nothing here. I think you can attribute that fact, Mike, to the great goaltending by Sean Kilroy. Really came up with some big saves. Nobody really knew what kind of game Kilroy would turn in coming into this. Definitely a question mark, but through one, he did an admirable job. He had the best goals against Danvers also in uh, his first year of junior hockey with Peterborough. So he's a youngster that has shown some good goaltending in the past, but hasn't really gotten the chance in the professional ranks. Was bounced around all over the place in the international hockey. They never really got to show his wares. And here he is being thrown in the fire, you can say, and he's doing a good job. Well, he definitely is, and that's something that you have to hope for, but you never know. And of course, Mike, you mentioned being bounced around. When he first came to the Indians a week ago on that road trip, we had a tough time figuring out where he played in the International League. He bounced from, around from so many teams, so Kilroy, definitely a plus so far. Let's take a look at what's happening in the American Hockey League, and the first thing we'll show you is what's happening in the American Hockey League's Northern Division, the division that the Nova Scotia Oilers are fighting for. Now, we have a Y there as far as clinching the playoff spot. So we know Maine has clinched, but after that, it's a toss-up. It looked like Adirondack was going to make the playoff for sure, but the Adirondack Red Wings have gone one in six in their last seven games. They are right now fighting for that playoff spot. Fredericton, Nova Scotia, and Sherbrooke all battling in there, and Moncton may have played themselves out of it with only 67 points unless they really put together a string at the end. Well, Moncton lost a tough game last week, which really hurt them. They had a chance to be in the thick of things, now fading away just a little bit. But, Mike, the Indians will be playing these Northern Division clubs now over the course of the next couple of weeks. So the Indians might have a say as far as who makes the playoffs in the North. Talking about the hot team in the division, the Fredericton Express have 5-2-1 and one in their last eight games. So they've been on fire after that big, long losing streak that they had earlier. Taking a look at the Southern Division, Binghamton, Baltimore, and Rochester have all clinched playoff spots in the Southern Division. And Binghamton, very close to clinching first place in the division, the Southern Division Championship. So as the fans can see, the Indians pretty much going to play Binghamton uh, with that fact that the Indians lead New Haven by four points and have four games at hand. That's right, four games at hand, very important for Springfield. That's the big thing, and of course the magic number four. And as we look towards the playoffs, if we can dream a little bit, look on, it looks like Binghamton, and I think, Mike, they can be had. Yeah, they, despite the fact they have 101 points, they're going to be missing some people. Dave Jensen just recently got an injury. He's going to be out for the rest of the season. So it's a chance for the Indians to possibly gain an upset in the first round. Taking a look at the top scorers in the American Hockey League, and we see the top five, Paul Gardner, 116 points, and he's only nine points away from the all-time record set by another Whaler, Ross Yates. Oh, Paul Gardner, you can't say enough about him. Could be the MVP this year, but the guy who sneaks in this week is Glenn Murkowski of Maine. I really like him. He's a small, 5'8", about 170 pounds, but what a scrapper. He might have a future in the National Hockey League, a great penalty killer, but look at the points he's assessed in 76 games, 74 points. So there's a new name added to the AHL's top scorers. Taking a look at the Indians' top scorers, and there you see the bunched-up stats with Ron Handy leading the way with 58 points. Of course, Alan Kerr not on the list uh, due to the fact that he's still on emergency recall to the New York Islanders. But those group there have been there almost all season long. That's exactly right, Mike. And they just keep jockeying back and forth. And we've talked about the balance scoring and everything else. But Alan Kerr is an important part. A good point. Still on recall with the New York Islanders. He's an integral part to this team. And of course, will be needed down the stretch. Taking a look at the upcoming games for the Indians, and there you see on your schedule, busy week for the Indians. The Indians right now in a current eight game in 10 day stretch. This is the first of their eight game 10, uh, 10 day stretch. The Indians will have played two more games against Nova Scotia on Saturday and Sunday before going on and looking at this road trip. Fredericton and Moncton, and then coming home for games against Maine and New Haven and then going on Sunday against the Sherbrooke Canadians. So eight games in 10 days, not a good way to end the season. Oh, what a way to go out, Mike. Eight games, 10 days, a big stretch, and the Indians will be tested over those games. Let's just hope the Indians have clinched a playoff spot before this uh, weekend comes up with Maine and New Haven and Sherbrooke. The Indians might have that luxury of clinching early, and then, of course, playing out the string, but not as tight as they might be right now. Okay, we're gonna flash on your screen something different tonight. We're gonna flash to you the American Hockey League playoff schedule for the Springfield Indians. Now the Indians will be facing the Binghamton Whalers unless the total uh, drop off for the Tribe late. Here are the playoff dates for the first four games of the American Hockey League and the fact that the Indians clinch and the Indians are uh, very close to clinching. Games one and two, April 10th and 12th in Binghamton. 
Now, those are games on Wednesday and Friday nights. Game three and four here at the Springfield Civic Center on April 13th and April 16th against the Binghamton Whalers. Those four games are for sure. And then as we'll look ahead for the games if necessary, Wednesday, April 17th in Binghamton for game five. Game six back in Springfield on Saturday, April 20th. And should a seventh game be needed, there'll be five days going on before the Thursday night in Binghamton on Thursday, April 25th. So the playoffs in the first round might even go to the end of April. Well, Mike, let's just hope the Indians make the playoffs. That's all we can bank on right now, but there are the dates, and we're really looking forward to it. Playoff tickets for the general public go on sale this Friday. So you fans that are interested in picking up playoff tickets for the Springfield Indians, the playoff tickets for the general public go on sale the 5th of April this Friday. Springfield Indians and the Nova Scotia Oilers. It's 1-0 in favor of Nova Scotia. Vern Smith, injured Springfield Indians defenseman, will be John's guest in just a moment. Vern sees things about the market that most other people don't. And when we spot them, we tell you about them. We don't hold back. We tell you the good news, and we warn you when you might get hurt. Get the next 26 weeks of Barron's for $39. Order today, and you'll also get as a bonus Barron's exclusive booklet to help you with your market forecasting. That's 26 weeks of Barron's plus the bonus booklet for just $39. Call 800-892-9000. That's 800-892-9000. Between periods here on Springfield Indians Hockey, our score, the Nova Scotia Oilers 1, the Springfield Indians nothing. My guest is injured defenseman from the Tribe, number 7, Vern Smith. And Vern, you of course are the Iron Man, one of them, along with Bob Bodak on the Springfield Indians team, playing in all 72 games up until this point. Now you're out of action with a groin injury. How's the prognosis look as far as getting back in the lineup? Well, I haven't, uh, haven't skated all week, and I tried it this morning, and it was a little tender afterwards, and it didn't feel too well, so I'm kind of taking it on a day-to-day -day basis you know and hopefully I'll be back early next week. I think the problem of course with the groin injury is the skating pro aspect of it. You don't get that that ice time that's valuable. It just takes a couple of days and you might lose that edge. That's right. I uh, you know all the conditioning that I did have before the injury is lost now so you know that's the biggest thing working working on the injury but the getting the conditioning back you know and playing and getting back into game shape. Let's talk about the game so far. Through one period, Nova Scotia seems to be really coming out as far as forechecking and bottling the Indians up a little bit in their own zone. Sean Kilroy, though, looks pretty good through one period. Yeah, he's really stood up, you know, as uh, he's under a lot of pressure, you know, coming in with uh, Lauren Sick and uh, uh, Sanzio with the suspension. You know, he's played really well under the pressure. And, you know, they have put a lot of pressure on us early in this period. And uh, they're a fast skating team, you know, and they're throwing a lot of hitting around. And hopefully, you know, after our six-day layoff and uh, you know a slow first period that will come back strong in a second. Of course the Indians not having that great of a time of it lately and with the six-day layoff do you think it was healthy for the club just to I know there was a couple of days off last weekend and an optional practice on Monday about three-day period where the guys could just get away from each other and then come back with a healthy attitude and try to snap out of this. Well that's what we tried to do you know you had a few days off and you want to go away and you know you don't want to take your mind completely off the game, but you want to regroup a little bit, you know, and get together and uh, spend a little time with each other and, you know, then come back and direct your thoughts towards hockey, you know. And we had a few tough practices this week, you know, which uh, hopefully, you know, prepare us for this stretch that's coming up to eight games and uh, ten nights. But, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, things will turn around, you know, with the, with the long layoff. It's got to be tough coming back, you know, right back at the game shape especially you know there's a little pressure on us because of our losing streak right now you know the pressure is to win and we want to win and uh, the biggest thing is just relaxing and going out there and playing. Let's say of course we're wishing a little bit but it's not too far away for the Indians to clinch that playoff spot. Let's look at Binghamton a little bit. Your opinion of the Binghamton Whalers? Well uh, we've had our trouble with them this year but you know in the, in the latter part of the season you know all the times we played them we've worked really hard against them. Because you know, you know, for the last little while we've known that uh, we're probably going to end up playing those guys. So you know, we're trying to key on them a little bit and get prepared each time we play them. And I think, uh, you know, if we really put 
get back to where we were playing before and put a solid effort in. You know, there's not a team that we can't beat. You know, and that includes Binghamton. Ryan, let's look at your career now. Coming out of junior hockey, the Western League with New Westminster, this is your first rookie year, professional year. Look back a little bit. The year is almost over. Has it been everything you've expected? Uh, yeah, and, and more. You know, it seems like uh, you know it all went by so fast. You know, there's a lot of ups and downs this year, and but that's going to come. You know, it comes with growing up, and it's part of the game. You have to accept that. And the mental strain. You know, I noticed this year was a lot tougher. You know, being in you know semi-pro. But uh, all in all, I've been pretty happy, and uh, I've learned a lot this year, and uh, met some great people. You talk about learning a lot. This is something that sometimes the fans don't get to know that much about a player, and things you have to improve on throughout the year. Your defenseman likes to rush the puck, move the puck, use your skating ability. But during the off season, what do you think you're going to concentrate on to come back stronger in training camp next year? Well, the biggest thing I think, you know, Lauren Henning's worked on me, worked on it with me quite a bit, is uh, playing my own end, you know, positioning and. Uh, being, being aggressive and taking the body and you know and, and knowing you know knowing where everyone is when in your own end and before you take off with the puck and things like that you want to know where guys are going and you want to be able to pick up your man and the open man and things like that you know there's a lot of little things in your own end that you have to learn defensively before you can take off and move into the offensive zone. This year you had a brief stint with the parent New York Islanders had to be a thrill for you going up with the big boys how did it feel and uh, what was it like? Oh it was great you know I I didn't really I had no, really no expe expectations of going up, you know, because they have nine defensemen up there and a couple of good young players. So, uh, but you know, with a couple injuries and uh, you know, which is bad for them, but it gave me it gave me a chance to go up there and get a feeling of what it was like, you know. And once you get that feeling, you know, you want to get it back as soon as possible. Vern, two of your friends off the ice, talking course of Dale Henry, Alan Kirk, both of them up with the New York Islanders. You. Of course, three of you are close off the ice. You share a house together, and now the two of them are with the New York Islanders. Fill the fans in a little bit on how they're doing and making an impression. Well, I just talked to them on last Monday, and uh, Al just went up on the weekend. But uh, Dale's been there almost just about a month now, and he's you know really enjoyed it. He's getting along good with the guys, but you know Dale's like that, and uh, he's playing regular, you know, due to a couple of injuries, and that's got to help him a lot, help his confidence, and. Uh, Al went back up to, uh, I guess, uh, I don't know who got injured, Keller, I think, got injured, so he had to go back up, and plus Brent Sutter's out, so uh, he's up there for, you know, who knows how long, you know, when they get a few guys back, I guess he'll be back down, but, you know, uh, they like it up there, you know, and that's what you're down here for, you know, you work, I know it's hard on the people in Springfield, you know, with call-ups and that, but that's why you're down here, you work as hard as you can to get up, up into the NHL, and, you know, I'm happy for them that they're there, and, uh, no, I'll, I'll be seeing him. We had Al on earlier the year, on, in the year on Continental Cable here, and I talked about some of the things that go on off the ice as far as domestic problems with the three and sharing a house. Any stories, of course, that are that you can say on the air <laughs> between the three of you that might be interesting? It, you know, when three guys get together in your first professional year out of junior, you all come out of the Western League, you all knew each other, but sharing a house sometimes can be a different experience. Well, I wondered about that, you know, I've known those guys for the last three, four years playing junior with them, but I didn't really know them personally, but, uh, you know, I figured moving in with three guys, you know, through the year you got to get on each other's nerves once in a while, but uh, actually it's been pretty good, you know, we're all pretty easy going, you know, and I know that, uh, well, I can say it about those guys now, you know, yeah, how now they're, that they're uh, gone, you can say anything you want. Yeah, they're, uh, they're not the best, you know, housekeepers around, and I'm not either, you know, I'm pretty lazy, but I mean, there's a limit, you know, and, uh, <laughs> You know, I kind of, they rib me about a little bit, you know, and I've tried, uh, at least I try, you know, I've tried a few new recipes, you know, cooking, you know, I'm not the greatest cook either, but I figured you got to have a variety, you know, try something new anyway, but, you know, I make something and they try it and, you know, they either throw it away or something, you know, I get, get a lot of hassle about that, but, you know, it's better than ordering out and you know, well, that's for eating sure. the you same know, thing all the time. On the road, you get that restaurant food day in, day out, you got to have some home cooking when you get home. Yeah, it is, and plus, uh, we've, you know, through the year, we've met a few people and uh, been invited over to their house, and you know, for a really good meal, you know, that someone's wife cooked or someone's mother, and it's it's really nice, you know, to meet people like that and you know have that home atmosphere because you know you're so far away from your families. You talk about the people you've met here in Springfield. Now, the fans sometimes can be a little bit tough on the guys, but they're very knowledgeable fans here in Springfield and a good core group. How do you see Springfield? Is for your first professional city to play in and the people itself? I like the city, you know, I've, uh, it could actually, you know, it could be any city. I like the states, I like being in the states, but, you know, Springfield's a nice area, you know, it's not too big, it's not too small, you know, it's 
it's a close knit area, and uh, the fans have been, you know they're they're pretty demanding, but you know they they deserve you know you know what they ask for. You know they should get it. You know when they come to watch a team play, they should get 100% all the time. You know and some nights you're gonna have your off nights, and you know it's all right for them to get on us, and uh, that's why they're here. Fern, now the team has some new additions. We're looking at the playoffs. That continuity's got to be there for the playoffs. What can we look for out of the Springfield Indians team? Lauren Henning trying to regroup the troops and heading down the stretch. Well, once we, uh, I think the biggest thing we need right now is just to get a win underneath our belt, you know, so we can sit back, relax a little, and play the way we're capable of playing with lots of confidence and uh, get on a good stretch going into the playoffs against Binghamton. Well, Vern, from what we saw early in the year, when the Indians get on a roll, they're hard to stop. Let's hope that happens. Uh, me too. Vern Smith, injured defenseman. Vern, thanks for coming on with us, and best of luck. Get that injury healed up and get back there down the ice. Uh, don't okay. want you up here in the booth because you're a good interview. You might have my job, <laughs> so we don't want you up here anymore. That's it. Yeah, Vern thanks. Smith, injured defenseman for the Springfield Indians, has been our guest here between periods. Back with second period action, Springfield Indians and the Nova Scotia Oilers right after this. Extra skate just for the health of it at the Springfield Olympia Ice and Roller Sports Center, your year-round sports facility. You can enjoy ice and roller skating as well as indoor soccer and floor hockey. The Springfield Olympia Ice and Roller Center has a full skate and pro shop, so you'll find what you're looking for. From amateurs to experts and anyone in between, a complete snack bar will satisfy that athletic appetite. For birthday parties, club get-togethers, or special occasions, renting a rink is the fun way to throw a party. And it's as easy as the Springfield Olympia Sports Center, conveniently located at exit 13 off I-91. Welcome back to Springfield Indians Hockey. We're just underway here in this second period. It's 1-0 Nova Scotia. Here come the Oilers across the line. And moving in on the near boards is Paul Hauk. He's taken out of the play. Here's Cote in after it. Ray Cote trying to feed for Hauk in front, but blocked off by Springfield and cleared off the boards all the way on the near side. Larry Kish on the near boards and the Nova Scotia players bench cleared up over the glass. Now looking at the Indians' parents' clubs as we're just underway here in the second period. This week, the New York Islanders will be in action Tuesday night, April 2nd, at home against the Pittsburgh Penguins. Thursday night, April 4th, the Islanders will travel to the Spectrum in Philadelphia for a game with the Flyers. As far as Minnesota is concerned, only one game this week. On Wednesday, April 3rd, they'll be at home hosting the Toronto Maple Leafs. Face off in the Springfield zone. The principals in the face-off circle. Pair number eights, Brian Lawton and Pat Conacher. Jammed up in the near boards, and Lawton feeds for Solheim along the near boards. Solheim gives for Pryor, ahead for Solheim. And across the line for Hamway, scooting in for Solheim, shoots run on. And a skate save by the goaltender, Barron. Now it's jammed up in front. Lawton after it, but the Oilers cover up after it. And in his own zone, Dave Allison. Here comes the Oilers. Allison's long shot to flex wide. Loose along the near boards. Now it's quickly centered. Now it's jammed up on the near boards and Springfield takeover. And a lead pass to center, but blocked off at the Oiler defense. Now Nova Scotia scoops to the Indians line, but Johannesson roughs up with Steve Smith on the far boards and Conacher leads for Allison. Allison, sixth in the all-time penalty list in the American Hockey League, clears it offside. Allison came into the action this past week with 1,257 career penalty minutes, five short of tying Roger Cote for fifth place for the all-time American Hockey League penalty list. And speaking of penalty minutes, tonight's trivia is who holds the single season record for most penalty minutes in one season for the Springfield Indians. And the second period clue on that is he was a big star for the Nova Scotia Voyagers at one time in his career before coming to Springfield. I was going to take a guess on that, but as soon as you gave me that hint, no way on it now. Now it's cleared into the Springfield zone. Leiter back after it. And Leiter feeds for Terry Tate on the far boards. He can't get it out. Quick chance by Height and Kilroy the stop as Height, the former New Haven Nighthawk, let it go from the point. Well, just underway here in the second period. 18-29 to be exact as you look at Sean Kilroy who had made a good save on that shot taken by Mike Height. The Oilers have one goal. Mark Habscheid's 25th, the only goal of this hockey game. 
The Indians with a couple of chances on Marco Barron. He has looked pretty good in goal for Nova Scotia tonight. And of course, Marco Barron, the Springfield fans will remember him in 1980-81. He got hot in the tail end of the season, backbone that Bruin-affiliated Indian club that took the Maine Mariners to seven games in the semifinals. A great playoff round, backbone by Barron. Now Loveday from the point, his shot is scooped up by Kilroy and he makes a stop. They're in a six-round Boston Bruin choice in 1979. You know, on that last play, we saw Mike Height let it go from the point. Height's one of those players the Oilers picked up in the Europe uh, European uh, pickup situation, uh, one of several players the Oilers picked up. Well, he was originally drafted by Los Angeles and played with Calgary in the Western Hockey League, of course, was with New Haven last year, and as you mentioned, Mike, picked up in that European. Now a quick chance went on, and the stop by Kilroy as it was let go by Lowell Loveday. Now jam back, but Jensen for the Indians gives for Markle on the board, checked by Height. He winds it back behind the net in deep, and the Indians have to go back. Here's Leiter, left wing for Handy. Ahead on the near side, and Tate leads a rush with Markle. Tate shooting, and bearing the stop as Tate blasted one. Now Markle after it, but the loose puck taken by Nova Scotia, but Handy is there for Springfield and leaves it back for his own defense where Jensen crosses center and shoots it in. one nothing Nova Scotia is Handy for the try. Jams up, now leaves for Markle. Markle gives for Tate, but blocked off with the Oiler defense and cleared to center. Now Bodak tips into the Nova Scotia zone and Height back after it. Here is Height up the right side for Tony Curry. Headmans into the neutral zone and here comes Nova Scotia. Graves his long shot. Stick to side by Kilroy and then Biggs, the newcomer, leaves it for Chris Pryor. Pryor cross ice on the near board for Bob Bodak. He's checked on the play by Melnick and it's cleared up over the glass into the players. Well, the play's a little sluggish here in the onset of the second period. Both clubs having trouble getting something started as you take a look at a youngster with a souvenir stick and he picked up a souvenir puck in the process. As you take a look at some of the throng here, the Indians averaging over 3,800 and another big crowd here on Friday night at the Springfield Civic Center. Play on the far boards where Chris Pryor covers up for Springfield. Here is Pryor for the Tribe, leading it on the right side, cleared to center, where Melnick covers up for Nova Scotia. Leaves it for his own defense, and here's Henderson for the Oilers, shooting one into the Springfield zone, and Kilroy leaves it for his own defense. Now he clears it himself on the near side, but Henderson jams him with Bodak. Melnick, the loose puck, feeds it in front. Chance for Suman and shot right on. Kilroy the stop, but a penalty coming up against the Indians. A hooking call coming up, and the Oilers will have their second power of play chance. Well, this is one of those desperation calls. Let's see it again. Ramos Sumanen, who's a sixth, sixth round pick. I'll get that out. Sixth round pick of the Edmonton Oilers right there. Was hooked from behind by Bob Bodak. He gets the penalty with 16.35 remaining in the second period as Sumanen was moving in for a great scoring chance on Sean Kilroy. Sumanen out of Finland can really skate, as you mentioned earlier, Mike, comes from the same area where Yari Curry comes from in Finland and, of course, played earlier this year on a line with Curry and the great Wayne Gretzky. It was quite a thrill for him in his young career, and he had a great scoring chance there on Kilroy, if not hauled down from behind by that man right there, Bob Bodak. John, we uh, have a note that Glenn Hicks is out for the game this evening, hurt his thumb on his left hand, and that was in the first period, and he is out for the hockey game. Face off in the circle to the left of Sean Kilroy. Tim Tripper to take the draw against Conacher. Now it's dropped back for Steve Smith at the point. On this power play, Smith holding on to that puck. Feeds on the far side. Now it's loose, and Kilroy is able to scoop it up and make the save. On this weather power play, another minute and 50 on Bodak's penalty. Well, in the first power play chance for Nova Scotia early in this game, they failed to score. Got a lot of scoring chances from long range. The Indian defense doing a good job around Sean Kilroy. We'll have to see how they work the puck around. They're not too good clicking on the power play this year, just over 18%. Have a tough time getting those scoring chances. Let's see what happens. Here are the Oilers on their power play. Loved it. Feeding it through as the puck is loose in the far side. Quickly centered, and Kilroy the stop on... Cote, who was cutting in. Now it's dropped for Loveday. Closing in, shoots, scores! Low Loveday, let it go. It may have been deflected in front, 
And on the power play, the Oilers lead by a score of two to nothing. Well, it's gonna be interesting to see this one again. It might be Pat Conacher who gets credited for that goal as the original shot taken by Lowell Loveday with a minute 34 remaining on the penalty to Bodak. There's the shot from Loveday. Lawton, who was diving to block the shot, could have got a piece of it also, but it definitely looks like Conacher redirected it right there in front of Sean Kilroy and might get credited for that goal. We'll have to wait for the official announcement, but nonetheless, the score now reads Nova Scotia 2, Springfield nothing. I tell you, Kilroy's played a very good game tonight. Both goals, he probably didn't have any chance on that one as it was screened in front, and it's 2 nothing Nova Scotia. Here's Johannesson dumping in. Barron leaves it for his own defense. Indians in the forecheck. Loose back behind the net and trot, or the Archibald trying to center one. Loose in the chance for Housen right on. And Barron the stop. Here's Tremper trying to center one. Jammed up behind the net and it's jammed up on the mesh there and we'll have a face off. You called it right, John. Conacher is 20th from Loveday and Cote at 351, a power play goal. And the weather is now one for two with the man advantage tonight. Well, you look at Jim Archibald, who already has picked up his first professional goal this year with the Springfield Indians. Had a brief stint with Minnesota already this year. Now finds himself back in Springfield, skating to the Indians bench. The Nova Scotia Oilers penalized on the play. A tripping call, which will give the Indians their first power play opportunity of the night. Going to the penalty box, Dean Decision. He gets the penalty with 15.39 remaining here in the second period. Now the time of this penalty will be four minutes 21 seconds in and as you mentioned John the Indians first power play opportunity 22.3 percent with the man advantage as you see two for nine on the power play against the Oilers 22.9 percent this year good chance for the tribe here Now Housen in his own zone. It was decision for tripping at 421, and the Indians down two to nothing have the man advantage. Here is Solheim up ahead for Hamway. Hamway speeds to center into the Oilers' end of the rink. Holds on to that puck. Now Archibald drops it back for a lighter, but blocked away, and then it's cleared on the far side for Housen, but knocked in offside. That was Archibald bringing that puck up down the left side. That was Hamway with 15:09 remaining in this second period. Well, plenty of time for the Indians here to get something started with a minute 30 remaining on the penalty to decision. There's another youngster in the stands and there's plenty of them here tonight. A lot of the junior players, the amateurs of the Pee Wee ranks are in capacity here tonight watching the Springfield Indians playing all day on Friday in the National Pee Wee Tournament Saturday and then concluding on this past Sunday. And between periods two and three, we'll be talking to the chairman of that tournament, Ernie LaBranche. Now the Indians in after it. Here's Hamway trying to jam through. Gives for Lawton. Gives to Hamway now. To the left point for Leiter. Leiter gives it free for Hamway. Surveys the traffic. Gives for Leiter. Shoots. And the stop by Barron. It was, it was deflected. Now the Indians clear one into the far corner. Here's Lawton. His wrist shot goes right through the goal crease. And the Oilers take over. And Conacher is able to clear one all the way down. And the Indians have to go back. Nobody back on defense there. Kilroy has to give it on the near board for Leiter. A lighter loses control. Oilers in the forecheck. And then Hamway in his own zone takes over with 50 seconds left in the penalty to do decision. Now Hamway shoots into the corner. Tripper after it for the Indians. Trying to wind one through. Gives it free for Hamway who is cutting. Circles into the corner. Gives it back for Tripper, but Tripper is tied up. Now Lawton behind the net takes over. Here's Lawton for the try. Trying to center one. Looks for someone to pass to, but hands it right to an Oiler player. And here come Nova Scotia. Up to center ice is Cote, who backhands free. And the Indians have to go back. Nova Scotia, who have won four in a row on the road, playing very good tonight as it's jammed up behind the net. Here's Cote with 12 seconds left in the penalty. Backhands it through on the far boards and are able to dump one into the corner. And the Indians not able to penetrate very much on this power play. That's two seconds left. Decision is back on. The Oilers have killed it off as Lawton into the Oilers zone. It's for Markle to Lawton. Lawton is tied up. They try and center one, but it's loose in Nova Scotia. Able to clear one in the near side. Now a half shot into the Springfield zone, but Tate leads to Trache. He's in the clear. Trache on goal. Backhander. Oh, and he missed the net. He was being hooked from behind, but never really got that shot off. Now Markle trying to feed for Trache. Jammed up, Johannesson steps into an Oiler player, but here comes half shot into the center ice area. Stops to make a play. Wheels it through, but knocked down there at the defense, and Pryor able to clear on the near boards for John Markle. 
We have less than 13 minutes remaining in the second period. 2-0 Oilers as it's cleared all the way down and Barron leaves it for his own defense. Now it's dumped in the near side. Curry takes over for Nova Scotia. Centers one, nobody there, and Trache leads Tate on right wing. Here come the try. Tate to Handy. Handy closing in, trying to feed one through, but blocked off for the defense, and the Oilers are able to clear one on left wing. Chance for Nova Scotia, and the Oilers' Suminen is checked off the puck, and Handy for Springfield leads a rush on right wing. Backhand pass for Tate. He races after it, gets their as the second player, and they roll it down on an icing call. Well, icing is the call. Looked like Tate might have got there ahead of the play, but I believe Tate did touch the puck, and a two-line pass was called by the linesman Quigley. The faceoff coming just inside the Springfield blue line. Here it is on replay. As you see the puck being cleared out of the Springfield zone, a little bit of a problem there, but a two-line pass called on the play. 12-16 remaining here in the second period. 2-0 in favor of Nova Scotia on a couple of goals. One by Mark Hebshide, the other one scored by Pat Conacher. That's where we stand right now. Face off from the Springfield zone. To the left of Sean Kilroy. 2-0 Oilers on goals by Hapshad and Conacher. The Indians will have to battle back here. From the faceoff, Steve Smith from Glasgow, Scotland. Fires into the corner. Big jam up in the near boards. Henderson after it. The loose puck taken by Springfield. Here comes Don Biggs into the Oiler end of the rink and the Oilers back after it. And Dave Allison loses control. Indians handy in front. Backhander loose. A big mad scramble. Penalty coming up. And we're going to have a... Penalty on the play, a cross-checking call in front, and the Indians will have their second power play chance of the period. Well, I want to see this one again. Looked like the defenseman Steve Smith gloved the puck right around the crease, and of course that would call for a penalty shot. Let's see it again and see what happens. As you see, the player Ron Handy of Springfield bringing the puck out of the corner. Cross-checking will be coming up right here momentarily. Big jam in front of that Nova Scotia goal. The puck goes off the skate of Smith right there. Biggs tries to get a stick to it. Here you see Archibald coming in. The player right there was cross-checked, handy, knocked down on the play, and Archibald is screening out Smith, but it looked like from our angle he might have got his glove on that puck, but nonetheless, the play was not called. Dave Allison gets the penalty for Nova Scotia. With 11.53 remaining, cross-checking is the call, and the Indians go on the power play. We'll see how the Indians do as it's dropped back to the point. Here are the Indians, Solheim winding through at the left point, shooting one into the corner. Trimper is tied up and pulled down, but the loose puck taken by Lawton. Here's Lawton to the left point for Leiter. Leiter closing through as it's jammed up on the near side, and back to the point. Leiter shooting and deflected and then chopped at, and it cleared all the way down. It ends up going in the Nova Scotia's players bench, and we'll have a faceoff in another minute and 33. Well, the Indians really didn't have a good chance to get anything going on that first power play chance, but now they get another chance here. Still plenty of time left as you look at the Nova Scotia Oiler bench. A minute 33 left on the penalty to Dave Allison as you take a look at Brian Lawton talking things over with the linesman Frank Quigley. Also Oiler captain Pat Conacher involved in that discussion. Face off in the Nova Scotia zone. with Trimper and Hamway, Leiter and Solheim at the points. Trimper, as you can see on your screen, jamming up with the Oiler player on the far side. Oilers, as we mentioned a couple of times, very aggressive team, even killing off penalties. They were doing a good job forechecking and playing the man. From the faceoff, Leiter at the point. Feeds for Solheim. Slides one back behind the net for Trimper. Lawton, the loose puck. Here's Lawton for the Tribe. Surveys the traffic, tries to center one. Another penalty coming up, and another one against the Oilers, I believe, as Tremper is down and out on the ice, and out comes Eddie Tyberski to attend to the Indians captain, Tim Tremper. Well, slashing is the call by Duhamel, but if this blood was drawn on this, it could be a five-minute major right here to the defenseman, Steve Smith, who got the stick to the Indians captain, Steve, uh, Tim Tremper, rather. As you see, he's down on the ice, being tended to by Eddie Tyberski right here. 
and it's on the scoreboard as a minor infraction, only two minutes. Let's see it again and see if we can pick it out as far as the harshness of this call. As you see, Tripper, top of your screen, circling the Nova Scotia net. He, of course, on the power play, is there to create a screen in front of the goaltender, Barron, and he takes a lot of punishment in front of the opponent's net he has all year long. As you see it again, as he was slashed right there by Smith, Tripper goes down, and the penalty to Steve Smith, two minutes for slashing the Indians captain, Tim Trimper. Now I'm sure he's letting Duhamel know that he feels a major could have been called on that. There's still a minute 21 remaining on the penalty to Allison. So an excellent scoring chance right here for the Springfield Indians. You guys you bum. He's off coming up in the Oilers zone. <laughs> See yeah, how the Indians can do with the minute and 21 left in the Allison cross-checking penalty. 8.46, the time of Steve Smith's slashing penalty. So a two-man advantage for the Indians, down by two at two to nothing. Housen for the Indians, centering a line. John Markle and Jim Archibald drop to the point for Solheim as Housen got the draw. Solheim feeds it through at the point. Now Solheim for the Indians, closing in. Feeds on the far side for Markle to Solheim. Top of the circle for Handy, back to Solheim. Shoots right on Barron, the save. Here's Housen at the side of the net. Centers to Handy. Handy feeding for Solheim. Back to Handy for the try. To Solheim, shoots. Barron, the save, rebound, score! John Markle on the rebound. And the Indians strike to cut the lead. Two to one, and the crowd here in Springfield in a frenzy. Well, the Indians capitalize on the two-man advantage. The penalty to Allison will now expire, but there's still a minute 37 remaining on the Smith infraction. Kenny Solheim from the point with a big blast. The stop made by Barron, and then John Markle right there to go into the top corner just beneath the crossbar and pick up a big goal for Springfield to cut the Oiler lead to one goal, the 14th goal of the year for Markle. It's 2-1 Nova Scotia. And a big goal for the Tribe with the man advantage, and we'll see if the Indians can tie it up here. The Indians have their chances with the two-man advantage. Didn't play back, and they worked the puck around beautifully, and finally on the rebound, we're able to get one home here before this big crowd in Springfield. Now immediately the Oilers clear in, and the loose puck taken by Springfield. The Indians handy in his own zone, back to take over, and leads a rush on right wing. Here comes Housen for the Tribe. In for Markle. Markle trying to get it through, but blocked off by Height, and Height's able to clear one all the way down, and the Indians have to go back. John Markle is 14th from Solheim and Handy at 9.09, the power play goal to make it 2-1. Here's Handy for Springfield, moving in to the Oilers' zone, backhands it through, and Barron leaves for Height. Now Indians steal on the far side. Archibald in front, Jensen shoots. Oh, and Barron a scintillating save as he robs Jensen from in front. A oh, scintillating save, a beautiful way to describe that one as Marco Barron flashed out that goal glove with a beautiful save right here. Jensen coming in, streaking in from the point at point blank range, lets it go with the wrist shot. And there's Marco Barron, look what I found. He comes up with a save. 10, 12 remaining here in the second period. 58 seconds on the penalty to Smith. And the Indians still with a face off in the Nova Scotia zone. Some good chances on the power play. A sparkling save by the Youngster Marco Barron from Montreal, Quebec, who is playing in Montreal Senior Hockey, a senior league uh, earlier this year, picked up by Sherbrooke briefly and then signed by Nova Scotia, the Edmonton Oilers, and he's here tonight playing extremely well on the Nets for Nova Scotia. Face off in the Oilers zone with 58 seconds left in the penalty to Steve Smith. Face off control by Springfield, but the Indian Solheim gives for Trimper. Trimper tied up in the play and Cote for Nova Scotia. Lead pass at center right. And in, uh, across the line is Pat Conacher, the captain. He's checked off the play by Leiter. He and Conacher fight for it. And the Indians take over. Here come the Tribe. Lead pass on right wing for the Indians' Hamway, who gives for Leiter. Here come the Indians. Leiter ahead on the far side. Lawton gives it free for Trimper. Trimper feeding it in front for Hamway. He's checked on the play. 26 seconds left in the penalty. It's Hamway right in front. He's checked off. Indians holding in. Here's Leiter at the left point. Can't 
get it into the corner area, and then it's deflected up high over the glass into the Indians players bench. Well, good view of the Indians players bench right there. Assistant trainer Ralph Calvinese, a quick shot of the general manager, backup goaltender Bruce Landon, and of course Monty Trotty. And they're all looking on as Tim Trimper once again, a real catalyst in front of the goal. He and Cloutier, Rajon Cloutier, got it started in front with Cloutier ditching out a lot of punishment on Trimper. Trimper now picks up a penalty on this right here with 9.32 remaining in the second period. I didn't see Duo Mill whistle him down, and we'll just have to wait and see what the infraction is on Trimper. There you see the Indians captain in the penalty box. There's still 19 seconds remaining on the penalty to Steve Smith. Well, that'll be the Oilers' third power play chance of the night when the Oilers player Steve Smith comes back on. And in this 2-1 game with the Oilers leading, teams at even strength for another 19 seconds. Still waiting for the announcement on that call to Trimper. I believe we're getting it right now. Tim Trimper and Cloutier were the combatants. And unsportsmanlike conduct is the penalty on Trimper, as Duhamel might have seen a retaliatory act by Trimper. Nonetheless, in 10 seconds, the Oilers will have the power play. Here's a near side pass for Nova Scotia, and Lowell Loveday leaves it for zone defense. Now Loveday, lead pass at center ice, and the loose puck taken by Hapshide, who wheels it back in his own zone. It's 2-1 Nova Scotia. Now the Oilers have the power play chance with Trimper off for unsportsmanlike conduct. Now on the left side, Hapshide shoots into the Springfield zone. Racing after it on the near boards is Hopkins. Hopkins circles behind the net, spins with that puck, leaves it on the far boards, drops it back for a height. Tees it up and then doesn't shoot, gives for Loveday. Back for a height. Height feeds top of the circle. Chance for Nova Scotia and Kilroy the stop on Hapshide. And Trotche is able to wind it all the way down and the Oilers have to go back. Another great stop by Sean Kilroy. He's come up with him right here. And of course, Monty Trotche, excellent when killing the penalty, cleared the puck. Now it's loose into the neutral zone and Hapshide takes over for Nova Scotia. Dumps it for Curry on the near boards. Curry drops it back to the point. Oilers try and feed through, but blocked by Leiter, who leads to center. Would have been a two-on-one had Markle able to knock it down, but the Oilers recover. In the neutral zone, here is Nova Scotia's Rajon Kluche. Kluche to the line for a half shot as the Oilers wheel and deal. Half shot drops it back to the point. The player Kluche at the point. Back as the Oilers play catch. Kluche shoots. Kilroy the save. Big rebound and cleared by Springfield. And here's Jensen. Ahead for Markle to Tate. Tate winds it off the boards for Markle, who tries to squirm through the defense. Now it's loose in front. Tate shoots, scores! A short-handed goal for number 12, Terry Tate. And the teams are tied at two. Well, it's about time. A lucky break went the way of the Springfield Indians, and it does here with 7.44 remaining in the second period to tie the game. John Markle did the floor checking. The Oiler defense couldn't catch up with that puck as it took a weird deflection off the backboards. Came out right in front to Tate, and with Marco Barron dead the rights, still 12 seconds remaining on the penalty to Tripper. It's a shorthanded goal for Terry Tate to tie this game up at two. That's his... First shorthanded goal of the year, and the Indians fifth of the year to make it a 2-2 game. The time of that goal, 12 minutes and 16 seconds. A shorthanded, unassisted goal for Terry Tate. And the Oilers have to go back with just a second to go in that penalty. Now Tripper is back on. The Indians have killed it off and tied the game with a shorthanded tally. And the Oilers clear it into the Springfield zone. Their player goes back after it. <laughs> now Hamway for the Indians. Across the line for Solheim. Solheim bats it down, but Barron's able to cover up and make the save. And we'll have a face off in the Nova Scotia zone. Well, Marco Barron, sometimes he's good when he gets hot. And sometimes he's unbeatable when he gets hot. But also the book on Barron is when he gets in a bad spell, Something like this could hurt his confidence, and of course, that was a bad break. Barron was playing a pretty fair game up until this point. Two goals scored, one, of course, on the power play, but the defense hasn't really helped him out on the two goals. We'll just have to see if Marco Barron goes into the laps. There's an excellent shot from ice level. Great camera shots, as always, but especially here tonight, this game looks great. Covered here on Continental, only one game.
game remaining. That'll be coming up next Monday night, the New Haven Nighthawks. The game taped on April 6th. The final two home games of the season coming up this weekend for the Springfield Indians. On Friday night, April 5th, the Maine Mariners. Saturday, April 6th, the New Haven Nighthawks, our next TV game. And of course, there's a couple of promotions coming up with those two games. And at the next break, I'll fill you in on all the details. From the face-off, Love Day gives it back for his own defense. Weathers are able to shovel up the center ice, and here they come on the far boards. Nova Scotia on the far side. Dean Hopkins, he spins, tries to get it for Conacher. Conacher behind the net, tries to center one. Love Day couldn't get his stick on it. Now Conacher on the near boards, fought for by Hamway, who's able to shovel it back for his own defense, where Johannesson covers up for Springfield. Ahead on the right side for Pryor. Pryor scoops one to the Euler line, then it's clear to center where Johannesson knocks it down. Now Johannesson feeds it through for Hamway, but it goes too far into the corner where the Oilers' decision leaves it for height. Six minutes, 30 seconds, left second period. Indians have tied the game at two, and here's a break for the Oilers. Conacher across the line. It pulls up, tries to make a play, surveys the traffic for Kluche, but Trimper back-checking, backhands it into the Oilers' zone where Nova Scotia will have to go back. Now Hopkins has some words with a couple of Indians, including Ken Leiter and Mark Hamway, and they're all separated as play is whistled down. Well, Lawton involved there with Dean Hopkins and play getting chippy, and Duhamel is calling, I believe, matching high sticking penalties here. The Indians, Brian Lawton going to the penalty box, no player going. It looked like Hopkins was skating in that direction, and now it is as the door is finally open, and Hopkins will get a penalty also with 6.13 remaining here in the second period. Those promotions, April 5th will be WHYN U.S. Air Night here at the Springfield Civic Center. Another paper airplane extravaganza. Hauser Buick also helping out on this one. Fly a paper airplane into the pickup truck and you will receive a free trip courtesy of U.S. Air and of course WHYN, always a great sponsor helping out in that one. On April 6th, Booster Club Awards Night. All the end of the regular season awards will be given out on that night. You won't want to miss it. One lucky fan will receive a trip for two to Bermuda courtesy of Bateran, Leak and Mercury. John, the time of the penalty is 13.47. And each team now will be at four skaters aside. Now it's jammed up and Lawton ahead on right wing, and here comes Housen with Tripper on a two on one. Housen in on goal, draws the goaltender out of position, centers one. Jensen couldn't get his stick on it, then blocked off of the defense as Housen was able to draw Barron out of the net, go behind the goal, but was unable to get it in front. Well, Scotty Housen was trying to wait to the last possible minute and then got himself in too deep. As you see, the tail end of the two-on-one, he and Tripper were breaking in. And then as he drew Barron way out of the goal crease, he then himself put himself out of position as he was in too deep in the corner to make a play out of it. And then they all jam up by the goal post, and there it is. There's our famous... Put a lot of oomph behind that one. Just give it a little one of those. Uh, I really gave it to him on that one. The whammy. That's the whammy. Only a little bit. Only every once in a while the whammy comes out. It came out tonight. Lucky for the fans watching this game. They really lucked out. Here it's jammed up in the neutral zone. And Markle trying to feed through. But blocked off with the Oilers defense. And Steve Smith takes over. Here in this 2-2 game in this second period. Midway through. And the Oilers come to center. Here's Allison into the Springfield zone. Allison pulls up at the blue line, now circles into the far corner to make a play. Ian Jensen collide, loose in front, chance for Hapshine, but he passed it instead of shot it, a shooting it. Now Hapshine, unable to take control and lighter for the Indians, leads the rush to center. Chance for the try, Handy with Markle, the pass to Markle in front. Hey, Handy, with too many passes, and Handy couldn't find the connections on that last pass. Now Handy fights off with Curry, the loose puck jammed up over there, and Curry leads a rush back for Nova Scotia. On the far boards to the Oilers' Hapshine. Hapshine closing in, shoots! Oh, and he missed the net. Big rebound. And the Oilers' Hapshine unable to take control, and then the Indians clear up out into the neutral zone. 20 seconds left in the matching minor penalties to Hopkins and Lawton as the Indians go back. Now Bear, uh, Cote into the Springfield zone. Pulls up, shoots one, and it's deflected up high over the glass and into the crowd. Well, Archie Henderson, Mike, hasn't seen too much action here in the second period, and outside of that one altercation he had with Glenn Johannesson of the Indians, 
after that, Larry Kish seems to have benched Archie Henderson. He hasn't seen too much time on the regular ship. There are some of the youngsters involved in that National Pee Wee Tournament. Teams from all over the nation this past weekend at the Springfield Civic Center involved in a round-robin competition to determine the national champ for Pee Wees. The age bracket 10 to 12 on that one. Teams coming from all over Detroit, Spokane, Washington, Toledo, and of course the local representative coming from Westfield, Mass. It's a great tournament that was played this past weekend at the Civic Center. From the face-off height for Nova Scotia, the players are back on. Lawton and Hopkins, and the teams are at even strength. Now Springfield in their own zone takeover, and here comes Solheim for Springfield. Solheim trying to go through the defense, but blocked off, and then Nova Scotia take over. Here's Steve's, uh, the Oilers moving in across the line. Conacher trying to feed through, but blocked off, and Springfield able to dump all the way down, and the Oilers have to go back. We have 3.46 left in the second period. It's 2-2 as Cote speeds in. Tries to get by Pryor, but Pryor steers him aside. Now on the far side, Barry for Nova Scotia to the left point. Weathers try and feed for Hauk, who winds it back behind the net, and then Kilroy clears on the near side. Here's Bodak on the near boards. Check Hauk after it behind the net. He and Bodak fight for it, jammed up and lighter for the Indians, able to try and clear one out of there. It's jammed up and held there. You know, John, the Indians' defense has really tightened up in the second period, and Kilroy hasn't had to do much in the second frame. Well, he saw an awful lot of action in that first period, but you're absolutely right, Mike. The Indian defense has done a great job in front of Sean Kilroy. You mentioned earlier before the game you thought that the defense would rise to the occasion tonight and play well in front of Kilroy. Looks like they're doing that right now, especially on the power play. Kilroy has got a good look at a couple of shots. The only one that he was screened on was that goal by Conacher, and of course that got by him. And Kilroy has done just an outstanding job as you see him once again on your screen. Sean Kilroy thus far playing a great game for Springfield. 3-18 remaining in the second period. Tie game to a piece. Uh, your buddy and mine, Archie Henderson, out there now for the Oilers as play on the far side. Archibald beats for Tripper speeding in. Tripper trying to get by the defense, and then the whole play whistled down offside at the blue line. Archie and I, good buddies. Well, I, you got involved in an altercation earlier this year up in Halifax with Archie Henderson in which he felt that you had said something nasty about him over the airwaves. And, of course, he was told this by... An informant in Halifax. And, and you weren't the one. It, I wasn't there, although I'm going you this give, time. You didn't give him the long-distance phone call up there. This game is broadcast on Monday, and who knows what kind of havoc I might reap up in Halifax on Sunday night. You never know. I might stir up some trouble. Here's play on the far side, and Leiter gives a head for Trimper, but blocked off the defense, and the Oilers have to go back. Less than three minutes to go in the second period as it's cleared on left wing, and here come Nova Scotia on the far side decision. Trying to feed one in front, but Trimper for the Indians. Leads a rush on right wing. Here's Trimper for the try. Crosses center, then puts on the Jets as he tries to get through, but blocked off at the defense, and Nova Scotia's Hopkins clear it to center, then the Indians clear it back in. What we're referring to is nothing too bad. We kind of joked about the fact that when Henderson put a puck in the net against the Indians up in Halifax, Henderson not necessarily known as the goal scorer. Don't say we now, you. I wasn't with you at the time. Go ahead, proceed. Anyway, uh, Henderson's not really known for his goal scoring prowess. He scored one against the Indians and uh, uh, a little bit uh, taken by that and uh, made a little bit of a comment on that and Archie found out about it and had to retract it, so. But we should also say Archie's one of the nicest guys you'll meet off the ice and he definitely was joking with you on that one, although he might not. Be, I might be solo in Fredericton Tuesday night after Sunday. Exactly. He's a good guy and uh, scared me a little bit, though. Now it's jammed up into the neutral zone, and the Oilers have to go back. He's got the size advantage on me. <laughs> now it's cleared back into the Indians end of the rink, and the loose puck taken by the Indians, Johannesson. And this 2-2 game with just over two minutes remaining as Biggs leads a pass on right wing for Bodak, but blocked off in the far boards, and the Oilers clear into the Springfield zone. Here's Johannesson winding one all the way back into the Oilers end of the rink, and the Oilers' Allison back after. Now Jensen for the tribe, winds it in, and the loose puck taken by Allison. Just a minute and a half remaining in the second period. 
It's 2-2 the score between the Indians and the Oilers. Hapshad and Connacher, Nova Scotia goals. Markle and Tate here in the second to tie it up. Now it's jammed up on left wing. Here's Solheim closing in, shoots. Oh, and he missed the net as Solheim closed in down the left wing boards and blasted one wide. Indians back after it as Kilroy leaves it for Jensen. Here come the Indians, Jensen. Lead pass out of his own zone. Now Jensen for Springfield. Up ahead for Hamway. Hamway dumps it into the corner. Oilers back after it and Height lines it on the board. Solheim in after it. Less than a minute to go in this second period. Big jam up on the far boards and it's shot into the neutral zone where Housen back after it. Now the Oilers love they back after it and we have a icing I believe called on the play maybe a two line offside that's what we have here a two line offside called on the play 46 seconds remaining in the second period Kenny Solheim can really shoot that puck and on that last rush where he took that slap shot coming down the left wing Barron came out of the net as you take a look at the backside of Marco Barron took away the angle quite well Barron's pretty big as far as a goaltender is concerned but Solheim just missed the far goal post. The shot went wide, but he only had about a fraction of an inch to go for and almost got it. And Solheim is also picked up an assist tonight, and he can shoot that puck with the best of them. Now the Indians are able to clear it all the way down, and the Oilers have to go back after it with just 40 seconds to go in the period. Now Nova Scotia clear on left wing, and here's a break for the Oilers as they clear to the Springfield line, but the loose puck taken by Handy, and Handy clears it on the near side. Then it's knocked back in offside at the Springfield line. 21 seconds remaining here in the second period. A tie game, 2-2 as you look at the Indian Scotty Housen. Two goals in this game scored for Nova Scotia. One by Mark Habscheid, his 25th. The other by Pat Conacher, his 20th. For Springfield, their goals have come from John Marco. Marco picking up his 14th. Terry Tate, a shorthanded goal. He gets his 18th on that one. And that's where we stand right now. Tied at two with just 21 seconds remaining in the second period. From the faceoff, it's loose in the neutral zone. And here comes Handy for the Indians. Breaking in his shot. Blocked off for the defense with 12 seconds to go in the period. Cleared back in the far corner. And Marco for the try. Tries to center one. Four seconds remaining, big jam up, and the Oilers break free, two seconds to go, and the buzzer sounds, signaling the end of the second period, and a very good one for the Tribe as they tie the game at two. Well, they cut down on the scoring chances made by the Nova Scotia Oilers in their own end zone, and then, of course, picked up the play the other way. Got two great goals, one of them on a power play, which, of course, was a beautiful shot by Markle in close after the original shot taken by Solheim. But the other goal, they capitalized on a break, and the Indians haven't been getting too many breaks. A lucky bounce to the Indians' Terry Tate, and he capitalized on it to get the goal. So after 40 minutes, tied at two, looking forward to the next 20. Of the shots on goal, 14 to 7 in the second period for the Tribe. 20 to 21 shots on goal, 21 to 20 in favor of Nova Scotia. Through two, between periods, activities coming right up on Continental Cable Vision, Springfield Indian Time. This week in hockey on Friday, April 5th, the Springfield Indians face off against Northern Division leaders, the Maine Mariners. And Saturday, April 6th, the Indians go against interdivision rivals, the New Haven Nighthawks, in their drive for the playoffs. So bring the entire family and join in on the action. Plenty of on-street parking available. That's Friday and Saturday at the Springfield Civic Center. Welcome back, everyone. Mike Barrick with John Forslund here at the Springfield Civic Center. Indians have battled back from a 2-0 deficit to tie the game. Oh, great period for Springfield coming back. The part I like, Mike, is finally a lucky bounce went the way of the Springfield Indians. Hey, over the six-game losing streak, nothing's been going right for Springfield. You need those breaks. And maybe, as I spoke with Vern Smith, maybe a little break will get them going. He mentioned that. Maybe that's what the Indians need to get things started, get the confidence back, which, of course, has made their play a little bit tentative. Tonight, after two periods, tied at two. It's a great hockey game. All between periods here this evening, we want to touch on 
Eddie Shore a little bit. Eddie Shore died at the age of 82 a week ago Sunday. And John, uh, a hockey legend here in Springfield. Well, he definitely is, Mike. I think one story I remember about Eddie Shore, of course, not really knowing him that well as a player, definitely as he played back in the 20s and 30s and not really through the 50s, the glory years of the Calder Cup 60s as he was the general manager and owner of the old Indians. But 1975, he bought the club from the Los Angeles Kings, took them from a last place team, changed the name in midseason to the Springfield Indians, brought back the shake, rattle and roll. That team went on to win the Calder Cup. There's a certain magnetism about that man. And of course, that those stories, and there's plenty of them, the Indians program, as a matter of fact, this weekend being a memorial to Eddie Shore. Plenty of stories filled in those, and the those will live on with Eddie Shore. Anybody that's ever read the book Grapes by Don Cherry, Cherry calls uh, Eddie Shore one of the greatest hockey people that he's ever played under, and there's always the story also that uh, Don Cherry related in the fact that one time Eddie Shore tied up a goaltender and tied his arms and legs up at the crease and had players shoot at him to uh, give some target uh, practice on the goaltender. And that's one story that I tell you, if I was a goaltender, I never would have enjoyed that one. Well, he definitely had his ways. Whatever they were, they definitely worked. As a player, a true great member of the Hockey Hall of Fame, and later as a coach, GM, and owner, Eddie Shore had the ways to know how to win. That's the story uh, uh, on Eddie Shore, uh, as you mentioned, a uh, hockey legend here in Springfield and, of course, in the National Hockey League. The score 2-2 between the Indians and the Nova Scotia Oilers. And, John, you had a good chance to take a look at the Pee Wee tournament that took place this weekend here at the Springfield Civic Center. That's exactly right, and that's who we'll be talking to between periods here. Two, periods two and three, we'll be seeing, of course, that interview. But first, if we have some highlights, let's take a look at those highlights of the game thus far and see if we have any goals here. And we'll take a look at some of those right now. Okay, the Oilers took the lead early in the first period, and here's the first goal of the hockey game. Well, here it is right here. Ed, uh, Nova Scotia, rather, jumped out to the early lead as they picked up a goal here from Mark Habscheid. The puck deflected here. Sean Kilroy makes the original save on Graves, and there you see the puck loose in front. Kilroy did all he could, but Mark Habscheid right here will come through the skirmish, pick up the loose puck, backhand it, even though Kilroy got a piece of it right there with a blocker pad, it still had enough to topple over him for Habscheid's 25th to give Nova Scotia the early 1-0 lead. That's the way it was after one period of play. The Oilers badly outshot the Indians in the first period, and then they scored a goal early in the second, and it looked like the Indians were going to be in trouble at this point. Well, they really did. In the second period, the Nova Scotia Oilers came out flying and asserted themselves on the power play. Here's Lowell Loveday's shot that was deflected by Lawton once, and then watch the deflection right here in front of Kilroy. That's the captain, former Indian himself, back in 81-82, Pat Conacher. He gets the stick on it, redirects it. Number one, there was a screen. Number two, the puck was redirected. Nothing Kilroy could do about it. The 20th goal at 351 on the power play made it 2-0 Oilers. Well, the Indians got a goal back. They had a two-man advantage, Ellison and Steve Smith in the penalty box. And with that two-man advantage, the Indians were able to capitalize and change the momentum of the hockey game. Well, a lot of open ice when you have a five-on-three situation. That's what they got right here. Ron Handy sent this puck over to Kenny Solheim. He one-timed it right there. Beautiful shot on Marco Barron. The rebound comes right out in front. John Marco on the spot as he got right underneath the crossbar with his shot right there for his 14th goal on the power play, which gave the Indians the cut the lead to 2-1. to one. And that's the story as it moved a little bit farther into that second period. Terry Tate uh, brought the fans to their feet with a shorthanded tally. Well, the puck was just simply cleared in right here, and we're seeing the tail end of it as it takes a weird deflection off the boards. Comes right out to Terry Tate, right onto his stick. Marco Barron caught off guard. This was a shorthanded goal at 12-16. Tate picks up his 19th. That's where we are right now, tied at two. Shots on goal through two periods, 21 to 20 in favor of the Nova Scotia Oilers. We'll be back with some more between periods activities and a look at the Pee Wee tournament in just a moment. Baron sees things about the market that most other people don't. And when we spot them, we tell you about them. We don't hold back. We tell you the good news, and we warn you when you might get hurt. Get the next 26 weeks of Barron's for $39. Order today, and you'll also get as a bonus Barron's exclusive booklet to help you with your market forecasting. That's 26 weeks of Barron's plus the bonus booklet for just $39.
Call 800-892-9000. That's 800-892-9000. Back between periods here in Springfield Indians Hockey and this past weekend at the Springfield Civic Center, the entire